Hi, everybody. I hope everyone can hear me. Um, I am so glad that you guys are joining me on, on your lunch break today to talk interior design. Just as a reminder, there is a question and answer feature at the bottom of your screen that we'll be monitoring throughout the webinar if you want to use that. And then next month, um, as part of our series, Ted Wilcox is going to be presenting on signage for fall enrollments. So just wanted to plug that. Um, thank you guys again so much for joining me today. I wanted to start by introducing myself and telling you a little bit about me. I am the Vice President of Design for Better Beans. And my main focus is to make sure that we as a company tell our customers brand story visually and graphically and make sure that those things speak well to each other. In addition to that, I manage the residential interior design department and assist with construction management for both of those teams. I graduated, graduated with a degree in interior design in 2001, which has been almost 20 years ago, and I cannot believe that, um, and hit the ground running soon after my husband and I moved to Athens, Georgia. I started working for a local developer here in Athens doing interior design and construction management and learned really the majority of my current construction knowledge by working daily on site with those local contractors through that job. It was super scary for me. Um, I was a 23 year old woman, a recent college graduate, newly married without any field experience, but the overall repetitive practice of working those two skills daily really helped me launch my company in the fall of 2007. Um, from there, I met Nielsen Gupta, our COO, um, and designed his first restaurant. And then in 2012, his second. And then later, he was actually the one that introduced me to Thad Joyner, our president. Um, I started assass assisting Thad after that with his rebranding interior and interior design needs for his childcare companies at the time. And then we partnered, um, Thad, Neil, and I, along with Ted Wilcox, to start Better Beans in 2016. I currently live in Watkinsville, Georgia, with my husband, Dusty, who is a touring classical guitarist and woodruff, uh, woodworker extraordinaire. He actually does a lot of projects for me around the home and um, for our customers as well. And we've got two daughters, Denley and Ivy, um, and a black lab named Georgia. We're constantly renovating our home um, due to my ever-changing desire to have something new and to capture new trends that are out there. Um, and I kind of blame my dad for that. He actually instilled in me this crazy desire to always be improving where you live. Um, I can't honestly remember any time in my childhood not having renovations going on in our house, which was pretty cool. Um, so I want to get into it today. Um, I wanted to start with a discussion about some trends and constants and then some tips that I like to follow when I'm looking at a space and then give you guys some additional quick tips at the end and then I'll also take some questions at the end too. Um, we're going to talk a little bit today about architectural details and textures that are here to stay incorporating natural materials to soften the look and feel of spaces, um, moody colored cabinetry and what that can do to a space, overall light white color walls right now being kind of the trend and how you can add color in other ways, going bold with tile, especially in areas like kitchen backsplashes, um, restroom floors, powder room walls or floors, and areas like behind a front desk in a business mixing metal finishes and then using your ceiling as a fifth wall and then also using different levels of lighting and what those are. Um, one thing I wanted to talk about specifically really um, architectural details are here to stay. Um, this is actually one of my favorite things to talk about and incorporate into my designs, whether you're wanting to tell your brand story by using these to support your overall design or just use them to warm up your space at home. Texture and architectural details can add a ton to a room. Um, the first one that I want to talk about is brick. 
I'm using it a lot. Um, it's, it's something that we actually kind of have the luxury with, I guess, here in the South because of the history that we have here. Um, you guys may not be able to have that luxury in finding 100 year old brick under walls. Um, but there are ways to create similar experiences with it by installing new brick on walls and floors. Um, right now, we're actually exposing a wall, which is in one of the pictures that you're seeing, um, in a retail shop that we're working on in Madison, Georgia. Um, and one thing I really love about it is it adds so much history. It's got such a warm, rich texture to it. Super visually stimulating for a home and a business. It adds tons of warmth and character, and it's a super huge attention getter. Um, one thing about this particular wall in this store that we're working on right now, um, everybody who walks in wants to touch it. And that's one thing that's so beautiful about that material. Super interesting. The next thing I love so much, um, and it's also behind me on my walls, is shiplap. Um, it's one of my favorite trends right now, and if not one of my favorite textures. I feel like it's here for good, um, mainly because it's just a beautiful texture. It's a beautiful wall texture. It's great to use when you need to cover wall damage or protect walls. It looks great installed vertically and horizontally, and it's super relaxed and charming. Um, Joanna Gaines and the Magnolia Home wave that we have had has really kind of set that stage and promoted that. It, it was used really heavily um, in New England design really for years, um, but she kind of catapulted it and I'm so thankful that she did because I love it so much. Um, the next thing I'm really crazy about is geometric wall trim. It is like art without having to hang art all over your walls. It's a really similar application to shiplap in that it is um, applied typically over a finished sheetrock wall. It's inexpensive. It can create a super dramatic look for not a ton of money. And you can use it in ways like board and batten, which is just a vertical um, application of that, or what you see in the picture is um, kind of an angled pattern that's geometric that creates a sense of fun and super creative and can be very sophisticated especially when you add those moody dark colors like what you see with that green this is one of my favorite um, wall applications and you see some shiplap in that picture too on that desk um, arches are another architectural detail that are coming back and used so heavily right now. Um, I feel like they were sort of toned down a few years ago with the farmhouse wave that hit, um, but we've been seeing them and I've been starting to incorporate them back into a lot of interior design spaces. They're very soft. Um, they add a great just juxtaposition to hard lines in a room that's really rectangle and square. Um, you know, archways are super easy to use um, in case openings, doorways. You can actually use arches and curves with a front desk in a business space, which is good. Um, that's just a really good architectural detail to have something that's round that kind of softens those edges of those lines that you see. The style um, behind that is really Mediterranean and, and Spanish in its influence. Um, but, you know, we're using it um, really across the board right now. The picture that you're seeing here, um, it's actually kind of more the the one that's got the white walls it's actually kind of more of a um, california southwest look there um one of my other favorite things to incorporate right now um, is metal on a staircase i um from a residential perspective i guess i'm using it a little bit more um, I have used it in both applications, but stairs themselves, um, I think most people think they're, they tend to be somewhat boring just because they are 
Um, you've got to have a specific height and a specific depth to them for them to be easy to go up and down. Um, but you can add things like paint, different texture, um, runners to kind of ramp up the style, but adding a railing that is different, um, especially with metal because you can do so much with it, is one of my favorite things. Um, they tend to be a little bit more expensive. Um, they add a lot of drama. And they're actually one of the bigger trends that's happening right now with staircase design and not the typical up and down straight baluster that you would see, but something um, like in these pictures with the more rounded architectural um, softened details that you get there. It's kind of an urban and cosmopolitan look. Very clean. Um, one thing that is really important from an interior design standpoint is to incorporate natural materials and um, you know those soften the look and the feel of a space. I, I like to do this by you know adding plant life, wood, any kind of rattan, wicker, um, anything like that that's natural. I try to incorporate into every project. Um, rattan and wicker specifically have been making giant comebacks with um, kind of the mid-century feel that sort of been coming back the last couple of years um, in recent years and it's emphasizing the feeling of bringing in the outdoors which is also something that I think we all enjoy to some degree. Um, when you walk, just think about when you walk into a hospital room, generally speaking you don't find any wood or plant life and that's one reason why we love to send flowers, right? Um, because it reminds us of home, it softens things, it um, brings that nostalgia back in. So anytime you can use natural materials um, like those, it's great. It just actually makes us feel a lot more at home. Um, accent and decor pieces made of these materials actually look really beautiful in kitchens. Um, you know, changing out your bar stool from a typical hard surface to something that's got rattan and wicker is a great way to kind of soften the edges with a hard countertop and hard cabinetry that you would see in a normal setting. And it's also great to incorporate into commercial spaces as well. Anytime you can add natural materials or plants, um, it just, again, it kind of makes it feel a lot more like home. And with childcare, um, you know, which we're doing a lot of, that's one thing that I feel like people really enjoy seeing. Sorry about my water. I'm thirsty today. Um, another big trend right now, um, and has been for a few years, is using moody colored cabinetry. Whether you are looking to refresh a kitchen, bath, or other space, or undergo an entire remodel, there are some things to consider when you're choosing a paint color or a stain color for your cabinetry. Choosing a paint or stain color for cabinet search at your home or commercial space um, may be one of the most substantial decisions that an owner will have to make, primarily because it's something that you're going to want to live with for a while. Um, it's a big piece of furniture in the room and usually sets the tone for how things are going to progress and how they're going to look in the rest of the space because it is such a large piece in the room. As an example of that, you know, think about your kitchen. You're going to see your kitchen cabinetry as one of the main pieces um, in your space. And, you know, from a business perspective, you're going to see an entry counter or a front desk as one of the first places where you're going to engage your customers. So you want it to be impactful. Um, there's not really a right or wrong here um, for that necessarily, but it's just choosing something that is um, impactful to you from a, really a residential perspective, something that you love and that you're going to want to live with for a while. Um, and then also from a business perspective, something that supports your brand. Um, we talk about that a lot in the um, branding world. And, you know, you want to make sure that 
number one, stylistically it fits with the brand story and then also that the color is supporting any signage, any logo that you see um, throughout your space, if that makes sense. Um, and you do want to choose something that you can't live without. <laughs> there are a lot of bold colors in these pictures. Um, I know, I mean, they're amazing, but they, again, they support kind of what's going on around the room. Um, it is a very big trend right now, and I think it's something that's going to be here for a little while. Um, it's, it is not something that can't be changed down the line, but again, just kind of make sure that it's something that you love and you want to live with for a little while. Um, one thing I was going to say about the super bright colors, Pantone actually picked as of last year, they had the Living Coral, which is similar to the one that's um, pictured at the top here. One thing that they said about it, it's an animated life affirming hue with golden undertones and it's energizing. So, you know, from a business perspective, think about um, how those colors speak to your brand and how they create the feel and the um, message that you're trying to convey to your customers. Um, paint, I know I talk a lot about this with our customers. It's actually a harder subject, I feel like, to um, kind of get through because we're always looking at these little bitty samples when we choose paint. Um, and it looks different in every space that you're working in. I, you know, my, my favorites right now and really the trend that we're seeing with paint and with color and the use of color is going with lots of white, lots of light. That scares everybody. I mean, I know um, I have, <laughs> I have somebody right now that I'm working with that's terrified to use white because it's this automatic feeling of, oh my gosh, I'm gonna have to constantly be cleaning it. That's not necessarily true, um, but it just, what's so great about it is it uses, um, it really is supporting from a business standpoint, it supports um, the color that you use throughout the space everywhere else. And it's just a great backdrop for everything. Um, my go-tos for whites right now are simply white and white dove. My whole house is white dove, which is this behind me. I love it. Um, it I use it constantly. It's one thing um, that really, to me, it's a warm white. It's not, that it doesn't look too gray. It works well with gray. Um, it's not a dirty white. It's just a good, across the board, it works great with everything. Um, white in general is very clean. It's timeless. It's great to use as a backdrop again, like I was saying, for retail spaces when you're trying to sell clothing or any type of retail um, item. When you've got something that has a lot of color in it, having white back behind that really just amplifies, um, you know, everything that you're trying to sell, which is really the point there. Um, you know, from a residential standpoint, I love it just because it fills rooms with light. It, it helps to bounce light around. So if you don't have access to great windows, um, it's a, an amazing color to incorporate into your home. It's actually super easy to touch up to in comparison to a darker color. And I think that's one reason why I do try to recommend it so much is because um, darker colors are super pigmented. And so when you go to do a touch up, um, you actually notice the touch-up spot a lot easier than you would when you're using white, which again, just kind of makes it easy. And I have two young girls, so, um, you know, I've got magic erasers that I have to take care of stuff in some places, but I will, I'm being completely honest here, I haven't had to touch up anything yet um, because of the quality that I use. But um, also just, you know, if I get to that point, it's going to be super easy because um, it doesn't have a lot of pigmentation in it. Um, and again, it's just, it adds a lot of freshness to the space, which I love. I see color all day long. Um, so I have to be calm in my own home. <laughs> um, one of the things that right now is also very important to people is 
again, kind of influencing our business spaces and um, those types of places around us where we are every day to make them feel like home. Um, we've done that in childcare for a long time, but that has been ramped up really in every business that I can think of, um, even into some um, restaurant spaces. I'm using a lot of, you know, instead of using cooler grays right now um, that have a more blue base, I'm still using blue in areas, but um, instead of using gray on the wall for the whole wall color, um, that's kind of being replaced with more ivory beiges or um, softer whites again with more brown undertones that kind of convey that earthy feel. Um, and creams and beiges, not, and not like the mix of gray and cream to get that um, grazy feel, but just a warmer, um, a warmer cream is being used. And when those are mixed with earth tones, they make beautiful statements on walls and cabinetry. And they kind of, again, um, just reiterate that sense of home that I feel like so many of us, even though we've been stuck at home for a long time, have been longing for in our workspaces. Um, one thing, uh, another thing I love talking about with people is going bold with tile. Um, there are lots of applications to use bold tile in, and it can be scary to some people um, just because you know, the way that you have to install it is a little harder than painting, um, but it is incredible. Um, you know, I use it, I use bold tile in kitchen backsplashes. I use it in restroom floors, powder room floors. I've used them on walls um, behind desks um, in businesses and on walls in restrooms. Um, it, across the all spectrums, residential and commercial, and it's wonderful. Um, thanks to all of the digital printing technologies that are out there with ink, um, they can mimic natural wood patterns um, and the colors that they're able to get and the level of detail that they're able to get now is just um, so far and above where it used to be. So it's it's just a wonderful way to add interesting pattern and texture to any space. Um, shapes like the trapezoid, the rhombus, diamond, those allow for a more interesting layout and that's something that we're using a lot of in some of those warmer colors. Again, those um, warmer greens, the soft pinks we're using a lot of now, um, believe it or not. Um, those have been really hot actually in 2019 and they still are going to be trending that way for this year and probably a couple of years out. Um, for somebody that wants something a little bit beyond the traditional subway tile that we were using, it kind of gives you a fresh option if you want to do something that's not so bold and heavily patterned. Um, one of the things to kind of expect with tile right now and um, with anything like that that's used as a dramatic art feature in a space is bright, super psychedelic, um, playful, geometric, super trippy patterns. Um, this is going to appeal right now to kind of that nostalgic baby boom generation focus um, and then their counterparts, the millennial group. And so that's why a lot of um, those trends have kind of been culminating <laughs> this year and last year. Um, and the one thing I also wanted to say about tile in general, if you still love classic subway shape, you can do things like what is pictured um, here on the screen in a herringbone pattern on the right um, or, you know, adding a little bit of sophistication with the color by doing something that's dark and moody. Um, you can stack the tile so that you get a more graphic layout of that as well. It's really beautiful and that does not cost a whole lot of money in comparison to using something that is heavily printed or has a lot of pattern on it. Um, I always, we'll jump into the next thing here. Um, 
really try to hammer home home mixing metals with my customers. Um, long gone are the days when everything had to match. I do not do that anymore. And most designers will tell you to run <laughs> or to make that change when you walk into a space and you see matching faucets, matching lighting, matching uh, everything, cabinet hardware. <laughs> um, make sure you get those changed. You don't want to use the same metal in your home or business. Um, it just is very flat anymore. I know commercially speaking, it's somewhat harder to do because you don't have every experience to showcase all of those metals in every way, but you can do it subtly. Um, one of my first steps, that I've got four steps, and my first step that I want to kind of talk about is picking your metal um, color cue, either warm or cold and curate two to three options from each of those. Um, look at the properties of each finish with nickel, brass, gold. Those all have warm yellow undertones, which make them a natural pairing together um, versus something like a stainless or chrome, which have a blue hue to them and are very, um, very bright and silvery. Um, black goes with both warm and cool options, whereas bronze actually tends to work better with the nickel and um, brass finishes because it is, it is a, um, a brass undertone underneath that dark um, bronze finish. My second step is to pick a dominant metal and use um, others as an accent. So what I mean here is whenever you um, consider a dominant metal, it could be something large like your appliances, which again, come in all colors and all metal finishes now, um, or your lighting, if you've got an amazing light fixture, pick one of those larger focal point groupings as a jumping off point and then decide what other things you want to incorporate. Um, I have, have a lot of stainless finishes in my house, um, but I also, you know, will go room by room and kind of break those rooms apart. I don't have um, the same metal finishes in every space, but within each room and in each area that I can see from one room to the next, I try to have those cohesive um, pairings working together. So I'll have the, the warmer gold tones in the nickels and brass pairing together with, uh, with blacks or bronze. Um, and then in another room, I'll do something like the, the polished chrome. I like that in a bathroom because it's super easy to clean. Um, my third step is to separate metals by height or use them in large groups. And what I mean by that is kind of keeping them on the same plane. So if you have um, lighting, your lighting could be an easy rule of thumb is just to keep your lighting in the same finish. That's at one level. Your next level could be your cabinetry hardware. And then the third, um, you know, could be appliances or just accent pieces that are around the room. Step number four is to create balance with that. And that just simply means spreading that dominant finish throughout the room. If you've got brass cabinet hardware somewhere, balance it out with a, ba a brass lamp in the other corner of the room um, just to keep from things feeling stale, if that makes sense. Um, another thing I love to talk about with my customers are using your ceiling as a fifth wall. You need to look up. Um, we don't do enough of that. Um, in commercial spaces, it's super important because of the impact of being able to tell your brand story ceilings can actually help with that. Um, we have to take care of those spaces because they are so massive. We don't want to forget about those areas. You can use things like iconography, imagery associated with your brand to hang from the ceiling like you see pictured. Um, to, and it just adds an amazing wow factor. You can also do a paint color that's different. Um, there's a really cool picture of a graphic um, wall map that's on the ceiling that comes down the wall up in the upper right corner here. Um, that is just super impactful to me. Um, and it's becoming more common to see 
throughout interior spaces across residential and commercial. One of the other reasons it's so important to not forget about them is that it will convey how well you take care of your space. If you have a damaged or dirty ceiling, um, it can draw down the beauty and professionalism of your business and how you take care of it. If you think about, you know, if you've got water spots from obvious leaking, or if you've got damaged ceiling tiles, dirty duct work, air vents, those all grab the wrong kind of attention and can really detract the focus away from what your brand is um, in a negative way. So just instead, treat it like a wall, look up, take care of it, and maintain it consistently. For residential applications, I like to use wall treatment. Um, I will, you know, sometimes paint a darker or lighter shade depending on what I've got on the walls um, to add interest and to add height and kind of make them feel a little different um, without a lot of money or I will use things like beadboard or um, you know beams are a great way to kind of draw your attention up and to elevate the ceiling height if you don't have um, the availability to do that. Um, they can add warmth and huge design features that assist with the feel of any room and they can actually make a room feel a lot more expensive than it really is because it has been well thought out. So don't forget to look up. <laughs> okay, the last, I think this is the last thing um, in this little group here, using lots of different levels of lighting, um, the different types of lighting and how to use them. There are three basic types of lighting, ambient, task, and accent. Um, layered throughout a room, those three, especially when it's multi-purpose, work together to achieve rich and flexible lighting design. They provide generally uniform lighting levels that work really well for most people. What that means is that you're layering your lighting. Um, you want to typically for task work, especially with doctor's offices, office spaces, childcare, having bright overhead lighting for completing task is um, super important. And then dropping down to that eye level or kind of that mid grade to fill the center of the room by using wall sconces or pendants that drop down to the middle. Um, also think about when you're in a bathroom for women, especially, you know, doing makeup in a mirror. If you've got lighting just shining down over your head, you typically create a lot of shadows underneath your eyes. So, um, you know, get something that's going to give you some lighting on your sides by incorporating wall sconces. And that goes the same for commercial spaces as well. Makes things feel a lot warmer. Um, and then that third level, that soft lighting, um, at, you know, having lamps to kind of grab that bottom half. So when you're sitting down at a table or, you know, you walk into a room and you've got something like, um, you know, rope light under a desk or anything like that, that kind of lights up that lower level space is super important um, because it just kind of gives you that overarching feeling of lightness, which is something that we want, especially from a business perspective when you're trying to sell and you're trying to um, tell that brand story. So what I want to do now um, is kind of go through my rapid fire quick tips. Um, I won't get into a lot of these in detail, but if you guys have questions, please save those and um, get those out at the end. Um, my first one is to create a Pinterest board. Um, I want you guys to get really good at learning how to map out your style and figure out the trends and things that you're liking. And when you do that, that's something that you're gonna be able to start seeing the types of things that you pin and um, the types of design trends that you like. It'll really help you determine what style you like. My second quick tip is create a functional space first. Look, if it does not work <laughs> and it's, it looks pretty, it's not gonna make you happy. It doesn't matter if it's pretty and you, know, you hate the chair that you're sitting in or you stumble into things, it's not gonna work and you're not gonna like it. So make sure that you create function 
um, that you can move easily through a space and that it works well for you first before you add all of the pretty things. Number three, do not pick a paint color first. I know this is kind of against um, what some people will ask and some people will tell me, but I want you to get in the habit of waiting until you pick out your big pieces like area rugs or specific fabrics that have lots of print because they have so many different colors in them. We need to support those by picking out a paint color after we pick our favorite things. Um, so just as a reminder, get in the habit of picking that last. Number four, make sure you have a focal point. And again, that can be anything from an amazing uh, shiplap fireplace or, um, you know, a front desk focal point wall, a, um, a really cool wall in a powder bathroom. There are lots of places um, from a business perspective to highlight your brand logo. Just make sure you incorporate a focal point. And I can share details about how to do that later and answer questions about that later too, if I need to. Number five, please do not hang things on your walls just to fill empty spaces. Um, think through your pieces and make sure that they are scaled correctly. Um, don't go out and just buy, you know, because, oh, I need something to fill a wall. Another, I, another thing I really like to tell people is make sure that they um, curate pieces over a period of time and pick pieces that you like, which I think is one of my other tips. Um, do the same thing with art because um, it is something that you'll want to look at, but it also, you don't want to just fill empty voids. Empty voids are actually okay um, to have in balance to having things on the wall. So just don't go buy wreaths and, you know, lots of different architectural things just to fill spaces. Try to be thoughtful of those. Quick tip, quick tip number six, again, tying back to that, only buy pieces that you really love. You will gather a more curated feel that is timeless and a better representation of who you are versus just trying to fill a space. Um, you know, I think a lot of people get scared by that because they think, oh my gosh, I'm going to have this super weird um, design style because I just don't know what that is. Well, chances are because you do tend to like specific things, you will notice that you will kind of create your own style. And again, going back to tip number one, um, having that Pinterest board set up to teach you what you like um, will kind of help with that process. Number seven, don't forget your first impressions. Um, make sure that your exterior matches the brand and beauty of your interior space. That goes for residential as well. Don't do all of your beautiful things on the inside of the house and forget about your front door or forget about your front porch or your yard. Um, make sure that those things match the integrity and the beauty of the things that you're spending time and money on on your inside. Number eight, and my last one, speak with or hire a designer. If you feel unsure at any time, we are here to help. Um, not just me, I, I know lots of others, um, but we also have several that work with us too. If you ever have any questions um, or unsure about anything, you can always ask a designer. Don't be afraid to, to feel like you're asking a silly question or that it's going to cost a lot of money. Um, we want to help. We want to make and create beautiful spaces and that's what we're here for. So, that is what I've got today. Um, what I want to go into is just answering any of your questions. And get this going here. My screen is frozen, guys, so just one second. <clears throat> I'm 
I'm so glad you guys came again. <laughs> Let's see. If anybody has any questions, please. Um, oh, the one, as a reminder, there is at the bottom of your, of your screen, there should be a little Q&A bubble that you can add, ask questions here. The first one I'm seeing is, what is the font in your presentation? The clean and simple one. Um, I will have to look at that. I think it's Avenir something. That will be something that I need to ask Ashley, who is our graphic design specialist. But I love it. It's one of my favorite ones. Any others? I know I covered a lot today and it's probably a little overwhelming, so. Tips for out, uh, designing outdoor spaces. Um, oh my goodness, there's a lot. Uh, <laughs> I feel like it depends on what type of space it is. Um, if it's a screen porch, off of a home, it's gonna be treated a little differently than a front porch. Um, we can talk a little bit about that later maybe. I can give you some extra tips. I feel like um, kind of focusing on, again, like the brand from a business perspective, if you're talking about that, um, making sure that it just reflects what you see on the inside from a brand. So if you've got bright colors, make sure you're capturing that with bright color flowers on the outside of your um, front entry or really bright pots at your front doors. Um, and you can do the same for um, residential as well. Any other questions, guys? Next one, how do you pull together a look, piece of tile, fabric, paint chip on a board together? Um, well, I go and I pick all of those things up. I bring them back and I lay them out. Um, if I'm trying to pull those together with a brand, I will lay all of that out with the logo, you know, on a table and see what works and see what's supporting that. Um, I talked a little bit about that before. Um, you know, I don't want to pick colors and textures that fight against what those are. So if it is um, a really intricate logo, usually other things will kind of take a little bit of a back seat, but still support that. So not be an overarching crazy pattern. Um, if it's for residential, it just kind of depends on what personal preferences are for a customer. Um, I love bold things myself in tile. Um, so, you know, I do that at home. Um, but again, you kind of want to capture your style first, lay everything out and kind of see how that all flows together and how that supports what your, what your main focal point is, if that makes sense. Any others? I just wanted to tell you guys again, thank you so much for hanging out with me today during lunch. Um, I know we are all so busy and we've got, um, I feel like everybody is working a lot harder right now to keep things moving and going because of all of the stuff that's happening in our world at this time. And um, I thank you guys again so much for giving us the time. Um, if you have any questions further, um, my email address is jordan at betterbeansbranding.com. Um, and I will give you my cell phone number at that point too, instead of broadcasting it here. But if you have questions, please reach out to me and to anybody at Better Beans. Um, and then next, next month, again, I just want to remind you guys that Ted is going to be doing the signage to kind of focus on um, fall enrollments for next month. So thank you guys again. I hope that this was super helpful and fun and different um, for you. And I hope y'all have a great rest of your week.